looking at a job, but looking to start your own agency, scared, Caleb Jones just shared exactly how he did it. You're going to want to hear his basic advice that will help you change your life now. Caleb. Hey, Dennis. How's it going? Good. How are you doing, my man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, Busy day, but excited to get on here and chat with you for sure. Awesome. Well, I'm super proud of you because there's a lot of people in agency land as you, that aren't successful and they look at it all as being about sales and a quick way to make money because that's what it looks like by all, a mm-hmm. lot of people on the internet. But you coming from the standpoint of operations because how to actually deliver for the client. And I think way overlooked, you are a good person and that shows through. That shows through in the things that people don't understand and clients trust you that that was never a question to me on whether good boy marketing would do well. Plus you're in a category where anyone who's working with pets should absolutely crush it in digital marketing. So I'd I'd love for you to tell more about your story, how you made that transition, because there's a lot of people that are starting agencies, a lot of young adults that they can learn so much from what you've done because they feel like they don't know enough. They feel like, or they feel that success is just cold calling or posing on the internet as opposed to delivery. So your experience coming from operations to then being able to start your own agency, I think is a lot closer and a lot better. And it's the, it's the right way to go than just declaring that you're an agency and thinking that just by being able to sell or posture, that that's the key to success. Like how do you deliver and what do clients want and what's the key to retention? And what, how did you get your first few clients? Like all those things. I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, I I love that. And I'm I'm happy to share all of that. It's for me, it was always skills first. It was, do I acquire the skills to be able to then start to deliver for the clients? It was never about how do I get my first client, then figure out Facebook ads. You know, that's what you see from every YouTube you see, right? Start cold calling, get a client, then figure it out. It's like, I, I try to go the reverse way. You worked at an agency first before starting your own. How has that changed things for you? Um, it gave me a lot of perspective um, before starting my own. I got to learn a lot. I got to work with a lot of clients from across the country. Um, and I got to mentor under a lot of great people. So it gave me a lot of, because it was always kind of my vision to eventually go into business for myself. Um, you know, I just always had that belief in myself. So I always just took the time to really just mentor and learn, do everything I could to then know when it was the right time to strike and move into my own agency. So I would say it just gave me a roadmap of the way that I wanted to operate in my business. When did you was the right time to start your own agency? I would say that that was kind of always on my heart, something I wanted to do, right? But it's always, you always got to balance your family and the stability of having a job with taking that risk to kind of jump in. And I knew it was the right time when I felt um, my skills were at the right place, when the opportunity kind of presented itself. And I just kind of identified, I guess I would say that I found like the right agency, the right niche, the right kind of clients to serve. Um, So when that lined up along with just really feeling like I had really maxed out my potential in my current position and role that I, I felt that I could serve at a higher level starting my own thing. A lot of folks struggle with choosing a niche. Mm-hmm. Because they feel like it limits themselves. And then you chose veterinarians with good boy marketing, or the, the pet mm-hmm. category. How did you decide on that versus like you could have gone into home services, which is where you were before? So I actually wanted to, I wanted to do something completely different. Um, and I really love um, any kind of niche or anything where you can relate. And I mean, who can't relate to loving pets and pet products and everything, right? Me and my wife are we, uh, it started because we basically got a pup about a year ago named Alfred really opened up our home. And, you know, we were kind of just me and her for like eight years before we got our pup. Right. So we ended up shopping here, shopping there, going to different things. We actually had a pretty bad um, experience at a dog trainer that we signed up for that had great marketing. Right. So great marketing, bad service. Um, and that's where like my marketer brain kind of kicked in. I'm like, you know, I'm finding better companies that provide these services that don't have that level of marketing. So I just kind of saw like an underserved niche and a kind of underserved thing there that in, that made me want to do good boy marketing. So talk to me about it's the process of, of what you actually do with good boy marketing for people that have that are looking to niche and start an agency and follow your steps. What what, what do they need to know and do? So what we do with good boy marketing um, is, I mean, our services are pretty straightforward. It's social media marketing, whether that be on Facebook, Instagram. TikTok, uh, we'll do pay-per-click marketing, website design and search engine optimization. So kind of the the big standard categories Mm -hmm. of 
digital marketing when it comes to, and um, I just want to make sure I get your question right, when it comes to selecting a niche and all that kind of stuff, like I said, it's just all about finding a niche where you feel like, A, that there's opportunity and B, that you um, have the inkling to want to serve those people, right? So that was my whole thing was just the desire to serve the pet professional industry based on my experiences with some companies and some products that maybe... I, I didn't have the best experience with. What do you say to those folks who are trying to do everything and they're they're afraid of niching down, feeling like there's less, like it, they're because they need to get more clients, so they figure they they want to open it up to everybody instead of choosing a niche. Yeah, I think that um, you can understand the the motivation there, right? To want to just take on everyone and all comers, but what niching down really does uh, for me is allow you to really um, understand and specialize in certain categories of services where you understand the audience a little bit better. You understand how these brands are positioned and marketed and you have kind of the gen because it all comes down for me when it comes to the digital marketing is, is the consumer psychology and the science there and how we're getting people to engage with these products and brands. So you get to spend more time developing unique marketing plans and angles and strategies for these guys versus spending all the time on audience research. Now, each one's going to have their own unique audience, of course, because there's a different variety of pet products, but right. you just understand the consumer psychology of people with pets, families looking for these kinds of services and products. So um, it allows you to specialize. And I think that that authority play does um, mm -hmm. help you get more clients um, in the long run. It may not get you as explosive of a growth when you're looking for taking on all comers at all times. But if you're looking to really build something, um, a solid foundation is a great way to do that. And I would say that ditching down allows you to build a solid foundation. Amazing. And the niche is how you set your moat. The niche for all you guys out there, you absolutely have to choose a niche unless you want to be a SaaS company or do something that's not services oriented. So did you, Caleb, did you choose your niche first or did you have your client first? So I actually uh, chose the niche first. Now, it kind of started because I was just, we got our pup and I was taking Alfred to daycare. I was taking him everywhere you can imagine, buying all this stuff. And I just, the idea for good boy marketing had popped into my head, right? And it was not necessarily the name good boy, like the brand, but it was just that I was like, I think this could really be a thing. I'm seeing dog trainers and vets are all like appointment based, which is a very similar to like local lead gen strategies that I was familiar with. Um, I was seeing... Uh, local and national e-commerce stuff like SEO and all that kind of stuff. So I was just very familiar with like the digital marketing aspect of it. And I saw, like I had said, um, some people that maybe didn't have the best services with good marketing and the people who had great services that didn't have the highest level of marketing. So I saw an underserved niche and I had picked the niche and build the website. And really I, I jumped all in, uh, got the logos and everything before landing my first client. How'd you get that first client? I took the route. Um, I just... Put up some Facebook ads, uh, looked, was hoping for some engagement. And luckily, I just, you know, um, found a client that uh, liked the body of work in terms of my skills and resources that I was able to share with them. They hopped on a call with me. We actually, it's not like a one call close kind of scenario. We had like three or four multiple calls where we went over their goals, their strategies. Um, I showed them exactly how I would achieve those goals um, and, and they signed on with me. So, yeah, it was just a, a slow process of Facebook to uh, multiple calls to kind of align the goals and the marketing strategy. So I know when I first started doing digital marketing that I didn't know anything and asking for a potential client for money was unnerving because A, I felt in my mind that I didn't deserve it and I didn't know enough about SEO and Facebook ads and PPC and website building. And I don't know anything about this kind of stuff yet. I'm asking somebody for money. So how do you overcome that? I, I, I felt confident, at least mostly in my ability to deliver. I had a lot of experience, like you said, working in an agency. Um, I'd actually worked in a few agencies, both interning and stuff while I was getting my sales and marketing degree at ASU here in Tempe. So a lot of experience there. I'd actually been doing social media for multiple companies for years. So I was a little confident in the skills. There was definitely a, a, a getting over the hump of asking for that first client, trying to get them put pen to paper. Um, and sign up for that monthly retainer, right? So um, I, I always just keep the mindset that, you know, if you don't, um, you miss every chance you don't take. Um, and, you know, you definitely will get no clients if you're not willing to put yourself out there. So um, I just always try to weigh the alternatives. It's I could either do this thing and risk failure, um, but the risk of failure is also gives you the opportunity for success. So that's the way I always frame it in my mind. What do you say to the young adult who has chosen a niche and they've spent some time watching as many YouTube videos as they can about how to do ads and SEO and this kind of thing, 
but they haven't gotten a client yet. It's been a few months. They're studying, studying. They've gotten on a few a few phone calls, but they just haven't been able to get that first client. Yeah. Um, and this is actually a problem that I have myself as well. I, I can be a guy who focuses on getting everything perfect. Um, I can be a guy who focuses on learning all the different strategies and stuff. Um, but what's propelled me to actually get out there and do stuff is, you know, just focusing on, you know, action over perfection and trying to actually get out there and do the things, uh, make the cold calls, or if you're getting leads coming in some way, book the appointments. Uh, get it on the ground level and um, you're going to learn more by doing than you will by uh, spending too. You got to have that mix of getting coaching and lurking online, but you also have to do because experience is the biggest thing to help you learn and grow. So yeah, just get out there and do it. Caleb, who do you follow for digital marketing? I always love to hear who, who do you go to for Facebook ads, SEO, AI, right? And, and, and I feel like that filter is better than the actual information we have. It's, it's better to know who to go to, who, who, who these other people are our filter for us. I follow anybody and everybody I can who is like an authority in the space, right? I definitely will just subscribe and go through everyone on YouTube that I can. I got, a, I got the opportunity while working in an agency to uh, learn from a lot of great people people you've had on the podcast as well. Um, Name like, some of these folks, uh, just just to be specific, yeah. uh, specific so oh, people yeah, know specific, yeah. who, who they should subscribe to and what books they should buy. Yeah, obviously, uh, learned a lot from you, Dennis, not to give you too much clout, but yeah, I have learned a lot from you and follow you. Um, you've had people on from the Seven Figure Agency space, so like Brady Sticker, Tony Ricketts, a lot of great people there that I've learned from Josh Nelson. I follow pretty much all the big guys on YouTube that you can imagine, you know, Ben Heath, pretty much everyone on there. And just, yeah, you know, everyone on... That, those are some of the specific people that I follow. I learned a lot from the Seven Figure Agency guys. A lot, a lot, actually. And um, yeah, I just say that you got to get out there and subscribe to the newsletters, follow the podcasts, and learn from everyone you can. How do you want to balance between spending money and time consuming information versus implementing versus selling versus all the things that you need to do? Yeah, that's that's um, there's a bit of an orientation process there, right? Because you could get too sucked into it's all appointments all day and you're not really growing your knowledge, right? Or you're spending too much time learning and trying to absorb knowledge that you're not really growing the business. So um, I would say that there's like a middle ground right there where when the business is growing, the clients are happy and you feel confident in delivery that you've kind of hit that that nexus, right? So it's all about a mixture of time management and just you do got to have that gut feeling that things are kind of trending the right direction, right? Um, everybody knows when you feel like everything's swirling and it's not, you're really going the right way and you, you're chasing the dragon, right? You can't really get a sound footing. So take it slow. Um, I try to get stuff off the board. So if you're trying to learn a certain skill, maybe try to close that gap, uh, learn that new WordPress feature that you're trying to work on or learn that new Facebook marketing strategy and then move on and implement. So uh, yeah, I try to like get stuff off the plate and manage my time effectively to kind of get there. So you came from a background of operations, which is getting it done. And mm -hmm. that's where most agencies struggle. So what is the key to getting stuff done? Because obviously if you don't deliver for the client, they'll eventually churn out. And most people, they don't know how to do the work or they're too busy selling that there's no, or they just want to push it out to a, a white label. What What's the key to actually getting stuff done and making sure we fulfill for clients? The key for me has been focusing on the clients, right? Because at the end of the day, I'm in it for the long haul. I'm not looking for short or like explosive growth um, in any way, shape or form. So I'm not taking on a lot of clients at any given time. I'm more focused on delivering for the clients that I currently have. When you start to scale, you need to make sure that your operations and your SOPs and your procedures are all dialed in so that when you bring new people into the company, that your processes and success scales with you. Yeah. Um, and then at the deepest level, it's just understanding each individual client, their goals um, and what they're looking for, and then laying out the roadmap for them. Every one of my sales calls, every one of my pitches, every one of my weekly meetings has been showing my clients, hey, this is your Facebook ads manager. This is how you check the edit history. This is how you check where I've been, what I've been doing. And I explained to them the reasoning, hey, we're gonna launch this campaign for this reason. These are our benchmarks for success, stuff like that. So transparency, aligning with the client's goals and making sure that they um, hold the keys to the kingdom and they know exactly what's going on. Because most of the time, business owners aren't looking for like a magic fix or fix my whole company or anything like that. They want someone to help handle the marketing so that they can focus on growing their business in other ways. And they just want to know that someone competent is handling it. And they just want that regular check-in. So for me, it's been transparency, client goal orientation, and doing the good work that needs to be done. Imagine that. And that's true in every industry. 
that does services. Now you've you've had Good Boy Marketing for about six months now, right? Yeah, I landed my first client uh, three months ago. So okay. yeah, it's about three months, but um, I've had the IP and the website for about six months. And and how far have you gone from let's just say zero to ninety days? Like how many clients? How much revenue? What's your team structure look like? What's your organization look like? We're still, like I said, not growing super duper fast. I'm not in this. I'm more interested in the clients' fulfillment. But we currently have five clients, which is not a huge amount, but we're doing all right. And I've got hopefully some more coming on shortly, but I'm trying to add one or two a month so I can keep the fulfillment at the quality that it needs to be. Um, we're at about five clients doing 6000 a month monthly revenue. So nothing crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but for just starting out, it's, it's, it's helping me and my family out. So it's doing the right stuff, right? Yeah. And uh, the team structure is really myself and my wife doing the majority of the work. However, you know, we did bring on... Um, a Facebook ads uh, consultant recently to help out part-time. So that's been pretty cool to have somebody that I can trust to really help there. So it's really a a small team, um, but myself and my wife are still doing a lot of the work. Yeah. Do you negotiate packages or do you have a, do you have custom work or do you have packages or how how do you figure out that how you sell your services or organize package them if at all? Yeah. Yeah. I've always, um, I've always understood the idea of like, productizing your marketing packages and stuff like that and this is the this is the thing the one size fits all that's going to scale every company or whatever but with being in the pet uh niche it's not exactly one size fits all so it is kind of unique packages per client now the line items are really the same it's going to be facebook and seo get the job done for you or it'll be you need to be on two different paid platforms to really push sales or it'll be just seo might benefit you or whatever that might be and Mm -hmm. There's going to be national clients that are doing e-commerce and then there's going to be local lead gen for like dog groomers, dog trainers and stuff. So um, the the delivery mechanisms don't really change, but um, the services I'm providing each client, I think, um, are tailored to their goals. So I kind of, I am mixing and matching at the moment. Yeah. How do you and your wife divide up duties? And what's it like having your wife as a business partner? I love it. Uh, I mean, honestly, she's... uh, uh, we've been together for 10 years, uh, married for two, um, and she's my best friend on the planet. So we get we get along pretty well. Um, and for me, it's all been about playing to each other's strengths, right? I'm better at getting in and getting stuff done and maybe taking action on some stuff where she can be a little bit more of a perfectionist and a wait till she knows how to do everything perfectly. But when it comes to things like helping with HR, getting paperwork stuff done, all of that kind of stuff, she's been really, really helpful. Um, I said I had a sales and marketing degree um, mm. in from ASU. She has a film and television degree as well. So when it comes to editing, creatives, other stuff like that, she's actually really fantastic. So um, we just play to each other's strengths and support each other when the other one maybe is burnt out or needing some help. So she's more kind of behind the scenes and you're you're yeah. closer to the account management. So you're at five clients. And let's mm. say you're adding a client a month and this time next year, you're at 15 or 20 clients and let's say that goes from 72k a year to 200k a year which isn't bad for a husband wife team how does the structure of your team change are you adding account managers like what what does that look like when you are triple your current size yeah i think um i mean you could tell from the first person we brought on that my focus is bringing on people to help facilitate client results right run on a facebook person um i think i'd like to stay in touch with my clients as long as possible um just to keep that personal touch so um i think the first people that i would bring on are still going to be um fulfillment and operations people um just to keep the the boat you know going the right way so the structure that i would build is probably from the bottom up client results focused first um, I've seen people have hybrid roles where they have like a Facebook fulfillment person that will also do mm-hmm. account management. I've seen the, the separation of the two. Um, I'm not sold on either one currently, but I do know that I think I'm going to scale the results first and do my best to maximize my time speaking with my clients and managing the sales so that we're not, because like I said, I don't want to add too many clients all at once. So I think what I'm going to be doing is handling the sales myself so I can keep the growth sustainable and uh, focus on growing the fulfillment. Fantastic. I'm super proud of you. And I love, I, I wish I could just take what you said and put it on repeat over and over again, which is the key, ironically, to growing sales is by taking care of your clients because they do the work for you. And people like Tony Ricketts, he's at mm-hmm. 4 million plus per year. He doesn't have, like, these guys don't need salespeople. I flew out to see him in Tampa a few months ago and he said, 
because I said, how many salespeople do you have? And he said, I have none because I go to a trade show and I'll close a couple of them myself or we get a couple of these referrals and all it takes is adding a couple clients per month. Now his are higher ticket, $5,000 plus. Um, but imagine you're adding an extra 10,000 a month in an MRR. After three years, that's, that's already another $3 million of MRR off of one guy part-time who just closes people that come in. And he's, he's at the point that all these other agencies want to be at, multi-seven figure, yet he doesn't need this whole sales team. He doesn't need to cold call because he's got a great reputation and he doesn't lose clients. The company that you're at before has lost close to three quarters of their client base, as far as I can tell, because they focused only on selling because the, the CEO was only, only wanted to sell and didn't want to fulfill. So I love seeing people like you, Caleb, that are results first, Lamborghini second, Porsches never. <laughs> I, uh, I have a 2015 Kia Soul and I'm probably keeping it for, for quite a while. That's, that's my game plan. So um, I, I, I definitely think that um, I've learned a lot over my time and over my time at previous agencies, right? And I'm not here to disparage any method right. that you take with your marketing, right? But for me, I, I'll take the slow and steady route. That's the way I always do it. Do you have any lessons that you'd like to share or, or advice that you want to give to people that maybe are where you were a year ago mm -hmm. and they've got a little bit of experience, but it it's this vague, scary unknown of mm -hmm. starting your own agency. They don't know who to hire. They're, they're afraid of having to be able to hunt for hunt for clients and make money. Yeah, uh, definitely. So for me, I, I, I fully understand the um, the the comfort that security and that uh, predictability provides, right? I think that that's the way a lot of great people get stuck in positions that maybe they're either not happy with or they're not fulfilled with. But I would encourage anyone listening and anybody who has an inkling to uh, serve at a higher level or make a better life for themselves or their family to just take that chance on yourself. If you think you have the skills or if you believe that you have the skills, um, take that bet on yourself because more often than not, you're, it, that bet's gonna pay off, um, especially if you're doing good work and you're out there fulfilling for your clients. Just like I said before, the risk of failure brings in the chance for success and the uh, certainty of security and stability at a, at, a, at a job also brings in the certainty that you maybe won't experience the, the growth of the lifestyle for yourself and your family that you're looking for. Amen. And that's worth it when you own, own your destiny and you own your goals and you and your wife can do whatever you want instead of the answering to the big boss. But there's a lot of people that a lot of kids, young adults, high school, college, and they see there are people like you and Marco and me that own agencies and they maybe they don't, they, I'm not saying drop out of college, but a lot of them, they want to be entrepreneurs and they want to start agencies. What do they need to do? Like a lot of people, a lot of these kids come to me, what should I do? What do I study first? There's so much on the internet. There's so many people that are giving advice and underlying is this. I don't know if I have what it takes. How do I know if I have what it takes and what do I do? So what's your advice to these young adults? Yeah, I think, um, I think that to answer your question, I think specifically if you're in college, um, what's great about college and what's great for me was I kind of went in with a game plan, um, right? So I know that sometimes in college you're switching majors and switching around and stuff. Uh, but what college offers is uh, opportunities to like intern, right? So look for opportunities and look for uh, areas where maybe you think you have the skills, but you're looking to actually get in there and implement them. Like I said, uh, action over perfection. If you can actually get in there, run a Facebook ads campaign, or if you can get in there and do something, you're going to build that confidence. I think it's Alex Ramosi who says, he, at least I heard him say, it, maybe he was quoting somebody else, but you know, if you build up evidence or like you stack that evidence that you are who you say you are, that's what develops confidence. You're not going to get confidence just by thinking about something or, you know, turning it over in your head. You need to stack the evidence that you're able to fulfill. So whether that's, you have a friend who maybe they are, maybe they're like running a gym or something and you ask them, Hey, can I build you a website? I think I know how, or you, you go find an internship opportunity. It's, it's, it's getting into the action steps and getting Proof that you can do what you uh, think you can do. And then that will give you the confidence to really bet on yourself, right? So that's, that's, that's the first piece of advice I would give. And the second one is just making sure to come up with a game plan, really plot out the course of where you're looking to go, uh, but understand that game plans change and roadmaps change, right? So if you can set like a North Star um, for yourself, um, the details of how you get there might change along the way, but you'll still have that kind of orienting goal to hit. So, you know, come up with a plan. Look for opportunities to implement your skills and grow your uh, ability 
and just push forward. Amen. Real work experience speaks more than anything you could say, however eloquent you are. I was just an hour ago with my friend, Chris Scott, who runs Paperless Agent, mm -hmm. multi seven figure agency. And he has a 10 year old that is doing video editing. And he was, so Chris was making dinner for his family and his 10 year old said, dad, I'd like to edit the videos from karate that we had yesterday. And he said, sure. And gave him access to the laptop while dad was making dinner. His son made Vincent made these, these YouTube quality at using software that does like high quality YouTubes. And he taught him all by the 10 year old did this. Mm -hmm. My friend yeah. Taylor Leaf is 15 and he came with me. I was the closing keynote at the National Funeral Directors Association and he helped assemble ads doing SEO using ChatGPT and these other AI tools to be able to help these funeral directors. What do you think about these young adults like the baby with the iPad and what advice do you have for them? They're watching a lot of young adults are watching this and they see you as perhaps many years of he ahead of where they think they could be, yet they actually have the skills and they can learn. They they know a lot of this stuff better than we do. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think um, I think it's incredible. Um, just myself uh, coming up and working through uh, working in positions and then going to college and then getting a job at an agency and then building my agency. I took I took the roundabout way to get there, right? Uh, but I really do feel like if you can develop the skills, um, all the platforms are out there. You can you can get your hands on video editing software. You can get your hands on ChatGPT. You can get your hands on WordPress. Um, the, the barrier to entry is pretty low, which is why sometimes you do experience a lot of people jumping in who maybe aren't so focused on fulfillment or anything like that, right? But uh, with that barrier to entry being pretty low, that means you can get practical real world experience, whether it's building a blog website for a hobby of yours to get to get experience and try ranking that right or yeah. whatever it is so I, th I think it's I think it's incredible that you know the young generation um, have a lot more experience really growing up in that world I'm right at the age to where I remember uh, dial up internet and spinning the dial on my phones uh, and then moving into the the having a smartphone in everybody's hands so I kind of just saw that transition as a young child and I think it's just arming the future to be more more productive and more able to kind of find other ways to serve people and be beneficial uh, you know, to the marketplace. So speak to these young adults. They're watching. Talk to them directly. What do you have to say for them? What encouragement do you have? Uh, if you think you can do it, if you believe in yourself, if you take a bet on yourself, it'll pay off. Just take the chance. Uh, don't be afraid. Don't overthink it. Get into action and you can achieve your dreams. Just develop the skills, focus on other people, and you can do it. That's That's really what I would say. Amen. It's literally that simple because if you can demonstrate that you can edit that video or drive the search results or run the ad, you literally just have to do it two or three times and you can get paid mm -hmm. doing it. Then as Caleb has mentioned, as you start to stack these other kinds of skills that builds your reputation and then you learn how to sell and you learn how to run an agency and you learn other functions and you learn to hire other people. So we have yeah. a lot of people in Pakistan and in the Philippines that are watching mm -hmm. this and they think that because they're not in America, they don't have the same opportunities and that they can't win in digital. What advice do you have for them? I've worked with some absolute rock stars from overseas. For me, it comes down to everything we just talked about. If you have the skills, if you have the proficiency you know, and you can communicate that and you can uh, portray that to people, then you can succeed, right? I think increasingly with things like AI, chat GPT, the internet, online communications, I think needing to be in a central location in general for success, I think that's getting spread out. Uh, so I think the internet is basically like, it, it, it sounds funny, but it's almost the democratization of like opportunity, right? I think a lot of people are getting an opportunity to succeed. All you have to do is work hard, develop the skills and demonstrate that you have the ability. Demonstrate the skills. That's the, the proofs in the pudding, especially if you're willing to get on podcasts like this and be able to share that so other people can see evidence that you have done this. What do you have to say to people who think that they suck on camera or they're they're not important enough to have a podcast or they are not like super successful with boats and Lamborghinis and things like that. And so they're not, they, they feel that they're not ready to be sharing their knowledge or make a one minute video sharing how they did something. But that's, that's another um, action over perfection scenario where um, you have to level up and you have to get out there and do it. And your first videos uh, always going to be your worst video. 
Um, and then you can always get better and better, right? And, you know, I even see the biggest influencers in the world talking about how they don't like the content they put out a year ago, right? So it's more about getting it, getting into it, getting out there. And you're always going to be your harshest critic as well. Like nobody's more self-conscious than I am, right? I am I, uh, not the biggest, um, you know, I haven't been on many podcasts. I'm not huge on putting my face out there, right? But just getting out there, um, I think when you take that chance, when you risk, you give yourself the opportunity to see that there's going to be a lot of reception in the marketplace. And there's going to be people who do like your message. And um, if you're willing to put out there information that's valuable to people, um, no matter what stage you think it's at, I'm not the biggest expert in the world mm -hmm. or anything like that, but you have some value that you can provide to people. There's going to be people looking for that value. So just share your experience, share the knowledge to the best of your ability and somebody out there will want to see it. So um, yeah, just provide value to others. Yeah. Amen. Even the smallest thing, it doesn't have to be this huge accomplishment. People resonate mm -hmm. with those stories. Is there a story that you want to tell, Caleb? Is there something maybe that people haven't asked you that you wish people would ask? For me, the story uh, really is just, I've had a lot of, I've had a long journey to get here, as I kind of mentioned before, right? From growing up in a real small town um, in Yuma, Arizona, um, having a lot of stuff moving and shaking when it comes to the work history and building it. If you can uh, just really believe in yourself, if you put yourself to the test, you look for a way to serve others, you can, you know, overcome pretty much any situation that you may have yourself in, right? Um, you don't want to weigh yourself against others. You always want to weigh yourself against who you were um, yesterday, right? So for me, my personal journey in terms of my life has been one that I haven't really shared too much about, but just that any situation you may find yourself in, you can overcome it. So that's that's the that's the message I'd like to share with people. Amen, Caleb. And I love how everything you shared is right on. It's simple. There's no magic to gaining skills. You you're it's not that you are super lucky. Obviously, you and your wife are hard workers. You've gone through experience at multiple agencies. You studied sales and marketing at ASU. You you put in the time, but it wasn't like you were super lucky by chance to be successful. You could have chosen any niche and you would have been successful. You could have chose real estate or garage door or whatever, and you would have been successful because you would have applied the same basic principles to be able to learn the skills, gain experience, deliver, and it didn't require some kind of amazing genius kind of skill to succeed. It was your steady action to take care of clients and drive results that causes you to continue to grow. It's been an honor, Caleb having you on the Coach You Show. My hope is that anyone who is in your situation, where, like where you were a year ago, they can learn from what you've done. And they can see that it is not super difficult. I mean, it's a lot of hard work, but it's not like it is some mystery of what you need to do. Where can people find you? Yeah, I mean, you can find, uh, you know, goodboymarketing.com. It's a uh, goodboimarketing.com. You can find my website and anything about my agency. I'm on Facebook. Uh, you can also find me on LinkedIn, uh, Caleb W. Jones, just after LinkedIn. Um, and that's pretty much it. You know, uh, go on there, send me an email, say hi. Amen. And Caleb spelled K-A-Y-L-I-B. Oh, yeah. I always forget that part. My name's very <laughs> weird. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much, Dennis. I really do appreciate the opportunity. It's been an absolute blast talking with you. Awesome, Caleb. You're amazing. Any final words? You get the final thought. Serve others and take a chance on yourself. Sounds like a mic drop. Awesome, Caleb. Appreciate you so much. Thanks for being on the Coach You Show. Thank you. Take care.